everybody, and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. Today we'll be revisiting a topic that I attacked very early on in the channel's history, the top channelers on the side of the light. Now, the first time I did this, there were some issues with my ranking system, and I think I generally had less information than I do now. Also, there were a bunch of crappy typos. Hey, it was early on in the channel and I sucked at it. I still do, but I'm a little better now. So in today's video, not only do I have a brand new, overly convoluted ranking system like I normally do, but the list is quite a bit different as well. And I feel like it's a lot more accurate. So let me quickly thank the channel sponsor, NordVPN. You can check the link in the description of this video to get a major discount on the VPN service, which everybody should have, but more on them later. Let's throw up a spoiler warning for the video. This video is going to carry a spoiler rating of red with major spoilers running all the way through a memory of light. If you have not finished all of the books in the series, click off this video and come back to it once you have. You have been warned. So before getting into the list, let's go over how they were ranked. As with all of my top 10 style videos, I've come up with a crazy and convoluted ranking system to help me formulate my thoughts and make it a little bit more scientific. And this video will be no exception as this ranking system is exceptionally convoluted. Now it's important to know a few things about this list before we get into it. It is not a list of who would win in a fight although the order might actually reflect the order of who would win in a fight. It's really meant to be more of a list of the most powerful channelers for the side of the light, and that includes things that aren't simply blowing crap up. Secondly, I've ranked each character at the height of their power to give a common place for comparison as many of these characters evolve over time. So I've broken this down into five categories to rank how powerful a channeler is, and I've weighted those scores accordingly. The five categories are raw strength with the one power, talents, skill, feats of strength, and objects of the power. With raw strength, this just means the total amount of the one power that a character can draw. I took the actual rankings from the companion and scaled that score down by a factor of 12 to give a score out of six. So for instance, there are 72 levels of power for women. We'll use Lanfear here as an example because she is definitely not on the side of the light. Lanfear is at the top of the scale for a female channeler, and so she would get a score of 72. And then I divided that by 12, and her score on this scale would be a 6 out of 6. Masana has a score of 71, and so she would get a 5.91, and so on and so on. Now, it's important to note here that Robert Jordan has said multiple times that the most powerful female channeler and the most powerful male channeler are roughly equal in power despite the men being able to draw on more of the one power than the women. He said that the women were more dexterous with their flows and that makes up the difference. So rather than using the scale with men being eight levels higher than the women, what I've done is I've set the men and the women at the same scale out of 72 equal to their raw strength score. For more information on these rankings and the levels of raw strength for each channeler, check out the video I did on the One Power earlier this year where you can see the rankings of every channeler in the series based on Robert Jordan's own notes. I will also have an article on thegreatblight.com that accompanies this video, which will have more information on that as well. The next category was talents. Talents are certain skills and abilities that are innate to a channeler that they excel at or have ability aside from their regular skill with the One Power. Examples with talents can be healing, traveling, unweaving, seeing Taviran, controlling weather, delving, and reading residues. Now this category would be ranked with a score out of three with the rubric for those scores on the screen right now. The third category is skill and training. The amount of the one power a channeler can use isn't the only important factor. It's important that they know what they're doing with it and have full knowledge of what is possible. Now this is gonna be scored out of four and you can see how that is broken down on the screen as well. The fourth category is feats of strength. It occurred to me that it's not enough just to know someone's potential power from people talking about it, but in a ranking like this, I wanted to see that power demonstrated. Feats of strength are times in the story where a character does something crazy or amazing or powerful with the one power. I'm gonna rank that out of four. The last category is objects of the power. Now this category might be controversial, but I think it's important because certain characters are not without objects of the power very often. These objects of the power greatly increase their overall power in some cases. So a rule here will be for the object to be counted. It has to be often in their possession or used by them often enough that it warrants inclusion. Just possessing an item once and not really using it does not include it for them in this category. Now this is going to be scored out of three. So in total, a character is going to receive a score out of 20. So let's go ahead and get into our list of the top 10 most powerful channelers for the light in the Wheel of Time.
Now coming in at the number 10 spot on our list is Dahmer Flynn. Dahmer Flynn is a former Queens guard from Andor and is one of the first men to come to the Black Tower when it was simply just the farm. Flynn was the first man to be tested and he excelled really quickly with healing weaves as well as being very strong in the power. So for raw strength, Dahmer gets a score of 5 out of 6. He's strong, but he's not as strong as some of the other male channelers from the Black Tower or the Forsaken, for instance. For talents, this is where he really shines. He's an exceptional healer and has the talent inborn. He's one of the best healers alive and definitely the most powerful male healer. Now, the reason he doesn't get a 3 here is that he isn't really talented with anything else, stating that he's not that powerful with traveling. And this is the only talent that we know he has, even though it is exceptional. He gets a 2 out of 3. For skill, he's one of the most skilled Ashaman channelers. He was trained by Rand directly and was able to discover a number of different healing weaves, as well as being skilled with some destructive weaves. Due to his long time learning from the Dragon Reborn and some time in the Black Tower, he gets a 3 out of 4. For feats of strength, Dahmer did a number of things that were remarkable in the story. He was able to contain the corruption of Fane's dagger in Rand's side, something that Sumitsu was unable to do despite her years of experience and training with healing. He also heals Stilling, completely separate of Nynaeve Almira. So for feats of strength, he's going to get a 3 out of 4. Now, for objects of the power, Flynn does not really use any, and so he's going to get a 0 out of 3 here. In total, Dahmer Flynn gets a 13 out of 20 and earns the number 10 spot on the list. Coming in at number 9 on the list, we have everyone's favorite Aes Sedai of the Blue Aja, Moraine Damadred. Moraine is an Aes Sedai who devoted her life to finding and guiding the Dragon Reborn. Now, prior to the discovery of Elaine Tracand, Egwene Alvir, and Nynaeve Almira, Moraine was considered one of the strongest channelers in the world. For raw strength and the power, Moraine was one of the stronger Aes Sedai prior to the encounter with the Finns and the draining of her ability to channel. The only Aes Sedai stronger than her in the power at the start of the story was Cad Swain Melidrin. Now, Moraine gets a 5 out of 6 for raw strength in the power. For her talents, Moraine has a couple of stronger talents with the one power. She is a particularly strong healer with the talent as an innate ability. She has ability with cloud dancing as well, which is the ability to control weather to a degree, but she's not anywhere near the level like the sea folk would be capable. She gets a 2 out of 3 here. For skill, Moraine is a very skilled channeler with extensive training in the White Tower and knowledge that she has gained from other research. She was able to piece together the weaves for Balefire and has trained as well as any Aes Sedai in the White Tower at the start of the story. Now, she isn't around long enough in the story to learn many of the newer weaves that were discovered by the Wonder Girls or from Mugidian, but she is skilled nonetheless. She gets a 3 out of 4 for skill. As for her feats, this is one of Moraine's strong points. She confronts and kills a number of Forsaken. She finds and guides the Dragon Reborn and is able to help protect him with the power. Additionally, she's a part of the circle that helps close the Dark One's prison. She gets a 3 out of 4 for feats. For objects of the power, Moraine is always in possession of an Angriol. Before her capture with the Finns, she had a medium-strength Angriol that she made good use of, and later she's in possession of a bracelet Angriol that's almost a Sa Angriol. She gets a 1 out of 3 here for power. In total, Moraine gets a 14 out of 20 and earns the number 9 spot on the list. Elaine Tracand is an extremely powerful Aes Sedai of the Green Aja. She's the Queen of Andor, and she's the leader of the Forces of Light during the last battle. Now, she's one of the most powerful channelers alive and has rediscovered abilities that were lost since the Age of Legends. In terms of raw strength with the One Power, Elaine is one of the strongest channelers alive after the last battle, and the strongest Aes Sedai other than Nynaeve in generations. She gets a 5.42 out of 6 for strength and the power. As for talent, Elaine has a few notable talents. She's a very strong cloud dancer, excelling at the manipulation of weather to a degree that's almost on par with some of the best of the Seafolk Windfinders, as she did train with them. She has the ability to unweave, although she's unpracticed at it. She's also the first person to copy and recreate a Tarangrial in generations among Aes Sedai. Elaine gets a 2 out of 3 for talents. As for her skill, Elaine is remarkably skilled with the One Power, despite not spending much time in the White Tower. Some of this is due to her ability to learn almost instantaneously, but more of it has to do with her captivity of Mogidian and learning from the Forsaken. Either way, Elaine is quite skilled with the power, and she gets a 3 out of 4. Now, Elaine's feats of strength are her discovery of certain Terangrial, and some of her fights with the Black Aja members. She doesn't have many feats with the One Power during the story outside of those, so she only gets a 2 out of 4 here. For objects of the power, Elaine is in possession of a number of Angrial, which she uses, as well as other Terangrial that she's copied. 
including some of Matt's Foxhead medallion. She is able to reproduce Terran Grial and has vast stores of other objects of the power from Ebudar. Because of this, she gets a 2 out of 3 for objects of the power. In total, Elaine gets a 14.42 out of 20 and earns the number 8 spot on the list. Avienda of the Nine Valley Sept of the Tardad Aiel was one of the strongest Aiel channelers in the story and one of the strongest channelers overall in the world as well. Formerly a Maiden of the Spear, she becomes a wise one and quite a powerful one at that. For raw strength and the power, Avienda is the same strength level as Elaine and Egwene. She's one of the stronger channelers alive at the end of the story, and she gets a 5.42 out of 6 for raw strength. For her talents, Avienda has quite a few interesting talents. She's able to read Terangrial in that when she holds an object of the power, she's able to tell what it does. She can read residues with the one power, and she's skilled at unweaving something that really no other Aes Sedai can do at all. Avienda also has a unique ability to understand what a weave would do before it's been completed, something that she makes use of during battle. Additionally, Avienda is very skilled at creating wards. Her wards are more effective than other channelers, including Aes Sedai. Because of these, Avienda gets a 3 out of 3 for talents. As for skill, this is where Avienda drops off compared to Elaine, for instance. She's very good with the one power, but she lacks the training that an Aes Sedai would have, and she gets most of her learning from spending time with Elaine and a little bit of training with the Aiel Wise Ones. She's very powerful as a channeler, but not as skilled as someone with her strength would be if they were properly trained. Avienda gets a 2 out of 4 here. For feats of strength, Avienda does a number of things throughout the series that are very impressive. She discovers how to make a gateway by chance, the first character to do so in the series. She later goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Grendel, a channeler far more powerful than her and more experienced, and with some luck, she actually defeats her. She discovers the use of many Tyran Grial, including another use for the pillars in the Roideon. For feats of strength, Avienda gets a 3 out of 4. For objects of the power, she's given an Angrial by Elaine that she uses that increases her power. For objects of the power, she gets a 1 out of 3. In total, Avienda ties with Elaine and gets a 14.42 out of 20, and the number 7 spot on this list. Logan Ablar is the former false dragon and leader of the Ashaman after the last battle. He is the strongest male channeler left alive and shows his high level of power throughout the series. For raw strength in the power, he comes in just below Rand in power. He is of the same level as the Forsaken like Agenor, Damandred, Mazram Taim, and Samael. He gets a 5.91 out of 6 for strength. For talents, Logan doesn't have any specific talents outside of the ability to see Tavirin, but we do know that he's considered by most to be the strongest of the male channelers and demonstrates the ability to copy Rand's destructive weaves almost instantaneously, and excels with lots of other destructive weaves. He seems to have an innate talent for a lot of things that he sees. For talents, we're going to give Loghain a 2 out of 3. As for skill, Loghain is extremely skilled with the power despite not having tons of formal training. He was able to learn quite a bit on his own as he learned to channel, but he received further training at the Black Tower, and he was able to glean a lot from spending time with Rand. By the end of the story, he was shown to be able to go head-to-head -head with Forsaken, and was able to help Rand destroy a Trolloc army with weaves that he just learned by watching Rand. Loghain's going to get a 3 out of 4 for skill. Now for feats of strength, Loghain has a number of them. He's able to go against the Aes Sedai before his capture without any own training. Later, he's able to destroy a Trolloc army with Rand by watching weaves and immediately copying them. During the last battle, he is a force to be reckoned with, and he goes head-to-head -head with the Mondred, but is forced to retreat only because of the song Real de Mondred possessed, for feats of strength, Loghain is going to get a 3 out of 4. Now for objects of the power, Rand gives Loghain the fat little man Angreal to use during the last battle, and he makes use of this to increase his power. Loghain gets a 1 out of 3 here. In total, Loghain gets a 14.91 out of 20 and earns the number 6 spot on the list. Breaking into the top 5, we have Olivia, the former Damani who fought alongside Rand and helped him die. Olivia is one of the strongest channelers of all time and is more than 400 years old at the start of the story and likely only a halfway through her lifespan. For raw strength in the one power, Olivia is as strong as it is possible for a woman to be, equaling land fear in strength. She is the top level of strength and therefore she gets a 6 out of 6 for strength in the power. For talents, Olivia isn't shown to have any talents that we know of 
other than being extremely proficient with weaves that cause destruction and death and killing things. She gets a one out of three here. As for skill, Olivia is probably the most skilled channeler outside of Rand at destructive weaves. She had nearly 400 years of experience and has refined her abilities over time. She isn't knowledgeable of much outside of those destructive weaves though, but she does learn extremely quickly and is able to copy weaves the moment she sees them. So by the end of the story, she's been spending time with Aes Sedai and copying what they do. So we're gonna give her a three out of four for skill. For feats of strength, Olivia is shown to be more than formidable in the series. She's able to fend off Sindane solo, something that no other channeler on the side of light outside of maybe Rand could do. She participates to great effect in the battle at Lord Algarin's Manor and kills thousands of Trollocs on her own. During the last battle, she's also extremely effective with the One Power, serving as Rand's final defense at Shea Ogul with Avienda and Cad Swain and a number of other wise ones. She gets a 3 out of 4 for feats of strength. Lastly, for objects of the power, she wears Nynaeve's Paralysis Net on multiple occasions and uses it to amplify her power. It contains multiple Terangrial and a powerful Angrial that makes her really, really powerful. She gets a 2 out of 3 for Objects of the Power. In total, Olivia gets a 15 out of 20 and earns the number 5 spot on the list. Cad Swain Melidrin is the oldest living Aes Sedai, and other than the Wonder Girls, is the most powerful. She's a legend among Aes Sedai, and her reputation is not unfounded. For raw power, she was the most powerful Aes Sedai prior to the coming of Elaine, Nynaeve, and Egwene, so she gets a 5.33 out of 6 for raw strength. For her talents, Cad Swain has a few of mention. She's talented with healing, although she's not elite. She possesses the talent for reading residues of the power, which is a rare talent. We're also told that she has many other talents that make her really powerful, but because we don't get to see them, she gets a 2 out of 3 here. As for skill, Cad Swain is a legend for a reason. She's trained in the White Tower, but she has great age and experience behind her. She's captured more men that can channel than anyone else. She's picked up weaves and learned her entire life. She gets a 4 out of 4 with skill. As for feats of strength, Cad Swain is not to be trifled with. She has captured many men who can channel, including Loghain. She participates in the battle at Chedar Logoth and creates the protective barrier around Rand and Nynaeve as they cleanse Sidene. She fights in the battle at Lord Algarin's Manor, and she exposes Simarog's disguise when she tries to capture Rand. She also fights in the last battle and helps to defend Rand at Shea Ogul going up against Grendel. Cad Swain gets a 3 out of 4 for feats of strength. For objects of the power, Cad Swain carries a full paralysis net and it amplifies her power a good amount. She's able to detect channeling, protect herself from physical harm, disrupt weaves, and she carries a strong Angrial, among other items. She gets a 2 out of 3 for Objects of the Power. In total, Cad Swain gets a 16.33 out of 20 and earns the number 4 spot on the list. Now before getting into the top 3, let me take a moment and tell you about the video sponsor, NordVPN. First of all, if you don't have a VPN service, it is absolutely necessary to get one. If you're a frequent user of the internet, if you travel, if you do any form of online banking or work, a VPN creates a protective network around your internet that prevents anyone else, whether it's your internet service provider, bad guys, anybody from tracking where and what you do on the internet. I bet you didn't know this, but your internet service provider more than likely tracks every website you go to and everything you do on the internet. If you don't like that, get a VPN. This can help prevent your identity from being stolen, can pr protect your internet activity from being tracked, and another feature is that it's going to let you watch content on Netflix, Amazon, and other streaming services from other countries. Want to watch a show that's coming on the European version of Netflix and you're in the U.S.? Well, awesome. A VPN can help. And the great news with all of this is that NordVPN is the best in the business and they are offering my viewers a major discount on services to the point that it's like barely a few dollars a month. Head to the link in the description of this video and pick up NordVPN. You will not regret it. Let's get back to the video. Nynaeve Almira, the former Wisdom of Emmonsfield, become Aes Sedai of the Green Aja, is one of the most powerful channelers of the age. For raw power, Nynaeve is at the same level as many of the Forsaken. She's stronger than Mogidian, and she's equal to some others. She's the most powerful Aes Sedai until Sharina Malloy gets raised to the Shaw. She gets a 5.75 out of 6. As for talents, Nynaeve is exceptionally talented. She's beyond gifted as a healer, possibly one of the greatest healers of any age. She's able to heal Stilling, something that had previously never been done. She's talented at delving as well as healing, and she discovers the process to heal Madness. 
She's able to unravel compulsion on a person, another amazing talent. Nynaeve is also strong in all five powers, something that is extremely rare among channelers. Nynaeve gets a three out of three for talents. For skill, Nynaeve is extremely skilled at the things she's good at. She learned from a Forsaken as well as in the tower. She's also naturally skilled at a lot of things like healing. There are a few things that she could learn more with training, but Nynaeve is really just incredibly skilled. She gets a three out of four here. For feats of strength, Nynaeve essentially has non-stop feats of strength throughout the books. She beats Mogidian, she heals Stilling, she helps cleanse Sidene, she heals Madness, she unravels Compulsion, and she's a part of the circle that heals the boar. She easily gets a 4 out of 4 for strength. For objects of the power, Nynaeve wears the full Paralysis net, which contains Terangrial and Angrial that make her very powerful. She gets a 2 out of 3 for objects of the power. In total, Nynaeve gets a 17.75 out of 20 and earns the number 3 spot on the list. Egwene Alvere has one of the best arcs in the books. From the daughter of an innkeeper in a flyspeck village to the Amarlin seat and one of the most powerful channelers in the world. Egwene is an extremely powerful channeler, perhaps the most well-rounded of all of them outside of the person at number one on this list. And so for raw strength, Egwene is very, very strong. Other than Nynaeve, at the time of her death, there is no Aes Sedai stronger than her. She was forced to her max strength early on and really grew from there. She gets a 5.42 out of 6 for strength in the power. As for talents, again, Egwene really shines here. She's a natural with metals and ores, able to manipulate earth with ease. She rediscovers the making of Quindiar and has a strong talent for it. She's able to rediscover traveling and again has a strong talent for that. She's also a dreamer, something that few have the talent for. She gets a 3 out of 3 for talents. For skill, Egwene is probably the most skilled Aes Sedai. She's learned from Wise Ones, from the Shan Chan, from Aes Sedai, and from Forsaken. Add on top of that her work ethic and drive to be the best. There are very few that can top her in knowledge and skill with weaving the one power. Egwene gets a 4 out of 4 here. For feats of strength, again, Egwene is incredible. She rediscovers traveling, the making of Quindiar, she defeats Masana in the World of Dreams, she single-handedly fights off the Shan Chan attack in the White Tower, and she's a one-woman force during the last battle and manages to kill all the bad Ashaman and Taim, and then all the Sharan Channelers. Egwene gets a 4 out of 4 for feats of strength. Lastly, for objects of the power, Egwene uses Vora's Sa'angriol quite liberally through the last few books of the series. That Sa'angriol elevates her power to, like, insane levels, and so she easily gets a 3 out of 3 here. In total, Egwene gets a 19.42 out of 20, and earns the number 2 spot on the list. So this may come as no surprise to anyone that the Dragon Reborn and the most powerful channeler of all time would be at number one on the list, but here we are. Rand is loose there in Telamon Reborn and is considered the most powerful channeler ever. For strength and the power, he's unmatched. Um, he is said to be as strong as it's possible to be. He gets a six out of six with raw strength and the power. For talents, Rand is shown to have many, although they are not highlighted and pointed out as much as other characters on this list. He's able to hold open other people's gateways with the power, force his dreams on others, can travel, create destructive weaves with the one power that no one had ever even thought of. He has the ability to split his flows more than anyone in history. Being able to weave so many things at once that other male channelers can literally not keep track of it. He gets a three out of three here. For skill, once he is merged with Luz Theron, there's really not a more skilled channeler in history. He was the most powerful channeler in the Age of Legends and was trained as well as it was possible to be. There's little that he doesn't know how to do, and he's exceptionally skilled at pretty much everything. Rand gets a 4 out of 4 here. For feats of strength, this is basically a no-brainer. He defeats multiple Forsaken head-to-head. -head. When he's barely trained with the power, he creates new weaves, rediscovers traveling, brings water to the Aeol Waste, cleanses the taint on Sidene, destroys entire armies with the one power single-handedly, and oh yeah, he manages to defeat the Dark One and close the boar. He gets a 4 out of 4 here. For objects of the power, again, stupid off the charts. Ren has the Choden Call, Kalandor, and an Angriol. Uh, the Choden Call by itself is the most powerful Sangriol ever created, being many, many times more powerful than Kalandor. He could and almost did destroy the world with the Choden Call, so Ren gets a 3 out of 3 here. In total, Ren gets a perfect 20 out of 20, and easily gets the number one spot on my list. So what do you think of the list? Uh, I'm curious what you would change and why. I'm sure this will spark some discussion. Please let me know in the comments below and give me your list. Uh, what would you change about my criteria, for instance? And how does this compare to the first video I made? I'm gonna leave that one up so you guys can kind of compare which do you think is more accurate. Make sure to smash the like button on this video if you liked it, as that helps YouTube promote it. 
and subscribe to the channel to see more Wheel of Time related content like this. We also have some exciting stuff coming up on the channel. I'm really excited for the future. Make sure you subscribe so you're going to see that. If you want to support the channel and thegreatblight.com, as we move to try to hire some people to help grow the website and create more content on this channel, please consider checking us out on Patreon. By supporting us there, you're going to have access to all kinds of other rewards. But more importantly, you're going to be helping us create more content and higher quality stuff. Thank you to all of you who already support us there. You can find the link to the Patreon in the description of this video. Additionally, make sure to check out NordVPN and get your discounted VPN. It's important, people. Thanks again for watching, everybody. And until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do Mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?